When I was a kid, my dad traveled a lot for work. Back then, his company was growing exponentially and my father was sent to oversee all the new stores and all the new openings all across the country. Very big job, as you can see. In 2002, he had a particularly busy year. My dad was assigned to a store in Pennsylvania, and because it was a longer assignment, and because it was summertime as well, he decided to take my mom and I with him. Since we were going to be there for a good two, two to three months, they gave us a fully furnished house in the suburbs. It was about two stories tall and at the end of a very lonely cul-de-sac. The town itself was also very small with little over 3,000 residents in it. And the suburb where we stayed at was even more rural. Our neighborhood was relatively new and most of the houses were still empty, giving it a weird, ominous, creepy vibe. The housing development, alone wood, had only just started cutting into the dense forests that surrounded it, and all the empty houses, again, gave it a eerie, albeit boring, feel. Lucky for me, there were a few other kids who lived in Lone Wood, and one of them happened to be my age. Jamie and I were both 12 years old, and really, that's all we needed to have in common. We had a lot of fun that summer. Being a city kid, I was eager to explore the bike trails with the local kids, you know, and basically go out into the wood. The city of Middlesburg was a very old town which was incorporated sometime in the early 1800s. The town itself had tons and tons and tons of history, but nothing really to do. One particularly boring Sunday, Jamie and I even went to the town museum. It was pretty boring to be expected until we heard some kid ask the employee about the lost town. The employee replied that it was simply just a legend, but that was enough to pique my curiosity. I, I quizzed Jamie about it, but he didn't seem to know much about it either. It was a full five weeks into summer before I even finally got some of my questions answered. Jamie and I were building a bike ramp over a narrow stream late one afternoon, and that's when we saw a group of five teenagers by seriously heading out into the woods. They're carrying flashlights and beer, several of them trying to scare the girl in the group into heading back. I wonder where they're going. I muse as I glance over at Jamie. He stood up and wiped his brow. I think I know where they're going. Uh, <laughs> where? I stood up and dusted off my shorts. The novelty of living in a small town had weeks ago given way to boredom and I jumped on anything that sounded even remotely interesting. <sighs> They're looking for the lost town. Okay, seriously, what is that? I know you know more than you're letting on. I need to know, Jamie. I need to know. At that point, I took a hold of his shoulders and shook in mock hysteria, and he promptly stumbled over for balance. All right, all right, I'll tell you. Jeez, Katie. The Lost Town is just a dumb legend. The stories say that Middlesburg had a sister city nearby, somewhere out in these woods. Then, one day, like a century and a half ago, the whole town just disappeared. The people left or died, or nobody knows. Nobody even remembers the name of the town. It's like a rite of passage or something for kids to go looking for it. Jamie, we should totally go look- No! Some kid went looking for it in the 70s and never came back. They found his body like 10 years later in the middle of nowhere. He got lost out there. It's easy to do, everything looks the same. <laughs> he was a total idiot, probably on drugs. I mean like, it was the 70s after all. We're a totally different generation. We have like, Satnav. Satnav? He looked at me curiously. Jamie had lived in this town, well, his whole life, and sometimes I honestly forget how stupid and sheltered he was at times. Satellite navigation, my dad has a GPS that he totally wouldn't notice going missing for a day. Come on, Jamie, it'd be so much fun. <sighs> I'd better get back. Jamie looked at his watch and then mounted his bike. My dad's taking me to a movie tonight. At that moment, I emitted a little bit of defeat. We rode in an uncomfortable silence until an ideal struck me as we rolled over the abandoned train tracks. They're old and almost buried by plant growth. 
Hey, I, I know you don't want to talk about it or anything, but has anyone f ever found like anything or any evidence that this even exists? No. Well, my friend's older brother said he found some human bones out there once, but nobody believes him. Oh? Well, <laughs> where do these people look? Well, almost everybody goes to the lake. It's pretty deep back there, but they figure that if there was another town, they probably would have lived on the lake, so that's where they go. Well, you know what I would do? I would follow those train tracks. I mean, they look pretty old, and I don't know why they would lay them going into these woods unless there was, well, something back there. So, I guess that's where I'd go. Jamie considered this and then nodded. Yeah, I guess I could buy that. No one follows the tracks that way, though. That's where that kid that disappeared went. His words didn't sway me. However, he had somewhere to go, and I decided not to bring up the lost town again. At least for another two weeks. It was a weekend before I was moving back to my house, and my parents had a barbecue for the employees of Dazzy's store and some of our neighbors. Jamie and I hung out inside the house and played N64 while... He flirted pretty outrageously. There had been a few unspoken sort of mutual attraction throughout the summer that no one had the guts to act on. Since I was moving home in about five days, there was absolutely nothing to lose. Although his intentions were probably pure and genuine, I am embarrassed to say that mine were not. I, I thought that I could make him, well, want to impress me, and he would agree to go looking for the lost town. The legend had, well, thoroughly consumed me. I had been to the local library every morning for the past week, looking for more information on the damn town, and had found practically nothing. But the legends did not just come out of nowhere, I'm absolutely sure of it. I knew if we didn't leave by 2pm, we wouldn't have enough daylight to carry out my plan. I already had a backpack plaque with um, water, a flashlight, a camera, and a can of red spray paint. I figured if we left tracks, we wouldn't need, um, well, to find our way back. I thought I was just so clever. Nothing in that backpack made a damn difference in the end, though. I was a fool. I set my controller down and looked at Jamie. Um, so... D do you want to check out those woods for the last time? I raised an eyebrow at him and gave a flirtatious smile. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, if, if you want to, that's cool. When he first started speaking, he excitedly jumped up off the couch, and then embarrassed, he cast his eyes down on the floor and tried to give that cool guy act. Cool, um, <laughs> let's go! I grabbed his hand and quickly ran out of the door, grabbing my strategically placed backpack on the way. Jamie didn't even notice it. He was walking faster than I was when we had gotten a decent pace, you know, into the uh, forest. Jamie and I turned around and looked briefly at well, my face before casting his eyes onto the ground. He rubbed the back of his neck and <laughs> said a rather cute thing to me. I've actually, like, wanted to kiss you all summer. I was stunned to silence. Absolutely dumbfounded that Jamie had the guts to say anything like this. I, I knew I needed to fill the awkward silence left in his wake, so I did the only thing I could think of. I leaned and I kissed him. It was sort of awkward at first, you know, considering his first kiss for two 12-year-olds, but it made me feel warm, and sent a butterfly swirling in my stomach made it all the better. So, I actually really did like Jamie. How about that? I, I let him go, and his face was the same shade of red as mine was, as I imagine at least. He quickly changed the subject how long he wanted to ask me out, and didn't think I liked him back, and... Well, we walked for a while, carrying on this conversation, him oblivious to his surroundings, me subtly like a snake leading him into the way. It, it took him stumbling over the tracks to break off his monologue, and then he finally noticed a bat pack. He, he had looked at me as if I punched him in the face. 
You can't be serious. Jamie, I, I know, but j just look. This is the last time I'm going to see you for a really long time. And I, I just want to remember today. We... We only will be out for two hours max, and we'll, be, we'll even be back before they even realize we're gone. Jamie stared at tracks for a minute, and seemed to be considering it all in his mind, and... Well, I held my breath, and felt a deep sense of guilt, until he finally let out a deep sigh. <sighs> okay. Oh my god, Jamie, I just... He held up a finger, cutting me off. But we follow the tracks the entire time, and we turn around after an hour. All right, that is that was completely okay with me. I was so excited that I hugged him. It would be the first and last time I ever did. As we walked, we talked about all sorts of mundane things, only stopping to make sure that we we're still on the tracks. It felt like we've only been walking for 45 minutes, but when Jamie checked his watch, it had been three entire hours. That's weird. It hasn't been three hours. It says it's five o'clock. I swear we left after two. It, it can't be five, dude. S I swear your watch is busted or something. I gave him a playful shove. Jamie um, raised his eyebrow at me and then smiled. Even so, we should probably turn around. He wasn't wrong. The sun was setting and the shadows were long around us. I wondered if it really was five o'clock, but I wasn't ready to give up just yet. As we had been walking, I noticed something taking the shape off to our right. A, a large mass, maybe a quarter mile away. It was denser than the area around it, and it seemed to be clean. Mad main lines. All that fun stuff. Jamie, look! He turned around and... Yeah, I was hoping you hadn't noticed it. It's a long way off, though. We would never find the tracks again. <laughs> I, I like to beg your pardon, but yeah, we would. Check it out. I triumphantly pulled out a can of spray paint out of my backpack. It's for the trees. He took the can and shook it, and then made an experimental X on the nearby tree. Okay, but, but I get to do the spraying. <sighs> I, I, I didn't argue. The closer we got to the mast, the more it took shape. First, we could tell it was a building. Then, a church. By the time we got to the front door, we were looking at a very old and dilapidated chapel. Remembering my camera, I took a picture of the wooden plaque over the door. Whatever had been written on it had gone long, long ago, worn away with age and you know the effects of the weather elements going against it. We walked around the church in awe. The building was small, maybe 500 square feet. The windows were surprisingly all intact, but cracked with dirt and grime. That we couldn't really see anything inside. How do we get in? I asked quietly. I don't know, but we're gonna figure it out. Wait until my brother hears about this. I mean, holy shit, look at this place. His excitement was enough to inspire me, so I went over to the front door, and I tried to pull on the pull handle, but try as I might, we, we couldn't seem to get the door open. It, it must be locked or something. I asked as I watched Jamie struggle with it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it must be. There was a door around back, though. The door at the back was a lot more sympathetic and let us in with relative ease. We were standing in a small room with an old wooden desk ta attached to a wall. There was a small fireplace and old porches that hung up around the tiny office. The people in the pictures were standing in front of the same maroon background and simply looking down at us disapprovingly. The books were scattered everywhere, most in a language I had yet to see in my entire life or see even recreated. The floor was covered in dirt and a pair of old shoes which were laying haphazardly in a, you know, one of the corners. Whoa. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> I looked over at Jamie with a huge smile on my face. He was, holding a, he was holding up a cross and a piece of paper. What is it? It's a list of names. There's like 60 people on this list. Maybe it's a town census. Uh, let me see. I pulled out my flashlight out of my backpack and shined it onto parchment. Deep wood. Do you think these are all the names of the people in the towns? I mean, all these names are crossed out. 
I'll accept one. I put out the name at the very bottom. Maybe it was the plague. <laughs> what? Y you think this is a list of the dead? Jamie shrugged. It makes just about as much sense as anything else. I walked over to the desk and leaned against it. Why do you think they left? I mean... Look, there's a jacket or something on his chair and shoes over there. The town pasher or whatever. Wh he, he, he just took off and left everything like it is. Or he died. Yeah, died. Either way, it must have been as creepy as hell to be alone in here. I, I stared at one of the porches for several long seconds. The woman painted on there seemed to be staring down at me with a very accusatory look. It made me nonetheless feel incredibly uncomfortable. I was so absorbed into the painting, I didn't even notice the slow creaking from overhead until I heard the ceiling crack loudly as it was starting to cave in. I screamed and covered my head, but the next thing I knew I was lying on my back over a threshold in the door, Jamie on top of me protecting my head. Ah! Ah, thanks. I mumbled as I gently pushed Jamie off me. Don't mention it. Jamie climbed to his feet and brushed himself off. I, I glanced behind him at the office, which was now filled, the floor to ceiling with decaying debris. Jamie, that was our way out. That's okay, don't worry. We can unlock the front door now that we're inside. Or break one of the windows. If the back office was simply unsettling, the chapel was downright disturbing. Even though the grimy windows allowed very little sunlight in, I could make out eight rows of pews lining the narrow aisle, and a tall podium at the front of the chapel. Jamie and I stumbled around the small <laughs> nave, breaking windows on either side with pieces of wood we had found. The sun was still setting, and I wondered how much of a difference the muted light would make. When I broke the last window on my side, I turned back to survey the chapel, disappointed that the lighting wasn't much better. The room itself seemed to repel light as if we were in a dark singularity. The wooden pews were completely rotted, and in fact the wood that we had used to break the church were a leg stand from one of the front rows on the aisle side in between the ropes and peels, which was littered with leaves and rotting wood. But that was nothing. Nothing compared to what sat on the altar. It wasn't a podium as I thought earlier, but rather a statue of a crucifixion unlike any I have ever seen. The paint had been worn away on every part of the statue except for the blood of the crucifixion wounds which stood on decay of time, which was the face of Jesus. The details on his face were so incredibly minute and perfect and had the same accusing eyes as the portraits in the pastor's office. He seemed to be staring directly at me. I could tell that Jamie felt the same, though it was across the room from me. The statue's stare awarded me with an edge of panic. I suddenly realized that we needed to leave. We weren't wanted here, and I had the sudden feeling that we were trespassing on some hollowed, haunted ground. We had found the church. We, we had found documents proving we had been here, and now it was time to go. I turned to Jamie to tell him that he did not share my feelings. He had been born and bred on these legends, and nothing was going to tear him away from our discovery. I, I watched him walk around and grab the camera out of my bag. He took a few pictures on everything he deemed interesting, including the crucifixion statue to my unease. I gave him several minutes before I said something. Jamie, I think we need to leave, like, now. Are you kidding? This is what you came here for. We have to bring home evidence. Evidence of all of it. It's going to be dark in a half an hour, and it's already hard to see in here. A few moments later, he asked me to take a picture with him in front of the creepy Jesus thing. Well, I simply responded with, uh, I guess... I, I mumbled as I took the camera in front of him. I didn't even want to look at it, much less photographic, but if it would help me get out of here a little bit more faster, I, I guess I was going to have to stomach it. Jamie wrapped his arm around it as I snapped the picture. Oh, don't touch it! Ah, crap. Why did you touch it? 
Th there's something off about that goddamn thing. Jamie, can we fucking go now? Yeah, fine. Jamie walked over and picked up the backpack. I headed towards the front door. I noticed there that there was absolutely no lock on it. I pushed against the door as hard as I could and it didn't budge. My heart sank. There wasn't even a handle or a knob, it was just a solid piece of wood with strange markings on it. Symbols I've never seen before. Jamie! The door's stuck! I said as I turned around to see him, testing the place's flooring with his foot. What are you doing? I asked, hearing the pe hearing the edge of panic in my voice. He was still at the front of the chapel with a foot from the St Jesus statue. Hopping back and forth on the part of the floorboard with another, that's just I seem to only follow him now. There's something under here. See? I heard the floorboard creak and crack under his foot as he put weight on it. Jamie, don't. No, it's, it's like under the dirt right here. The floor is hollow. It's like a trap door or something. And it was indeed a weird trap door thing. I watched him dig through the floorboard as... To my surprise, he was completely correct. By the time I had walked the length of the pews, Jamie had already had the edges dug halfway out. Let's just leave it. Let's just leave it, and your brother and his friends can come back and see what it is. Please, Jamie, I want to go. There's something wrong with this place. Something terribly wrong, and the thought of spending one more minute here had me on. A preamble for a panic attack, something I hadn't experienced in over a year. I sat down against the front pew and put my head down. I heard roaring in my ears. My breathing grew, like, louder, like a leopard. I had, I just had to leave here. Even without Jamie, I rocked back and forth for a few minutes and I, I, I tried to calm myself down. I would climb out of the window and run. In any direction, it didn't matter. There's something here. Under the church. At least, that's what I think he said. But I better remember the horror that I felt as I started to stare down the hole that Jamie had opened. Two minutes. We go down, we take a couple of pictures of whatever's down there, and we come right back up and leave. Just two minutes, Katie. That's all I'm asking. I wanted to say no. I, I had I intended to. But I felt myself slowly nodding as Jamie pulled me to my feet. To this day, I have no fucking clue why I agreed, but I, I suppose that what happened down there didn't happen to Jamie alone. We're going to come back with the story of the lifetime. What if there's gold down there or, or like valuable paintings or gold or something? We would be rich, so rich that your family could stay here. You could buy the house you're living in and come to school with me in September. That managed to calm my nerves just a little bit. I managed a small smile and... Of all the things I could think of buying with the wealth, Jamie's first thought was to no, keep me here with him. And he was right. There could have been anything down there amongst the old stuff that was valuable. I took up a deep breath and... <sighs> two minutes. That's it. Two minutes. As we leaned over the trap door, I peered down. The first thing we noticed was an intense heat emitting upwards from the hole. The second was strangely out of was a strangely out of place stop a spiral staircase leading into the depths below. Jamie rolled a flashlight over to me with his foot. I picked it up and pulled a lighter out of his pocket. Ladies first. No way. You found a store, you go first. Between the black staircase and heat, I feel like we're descending directly into hell. I swear to god, I am not going first. I crossed my arms and I glared at him to reinforce my point. Jamie simply shrugged and stepped into the staircase. I took several deep breaths as I watched his head disappear into the darkness below. I almost didn't follow him, but I was still deciding when he yelled at me to shine the flashlight down the stairs so I could see. I started running down the stairs after him. They, he, they went down a little farther than I thought and it became warmer and warmer the further down we went. When we finally reached the bottom, I was holding back what, well, what threatened to be a massive anxiety attack. We were further beneath the church than I thought would ever be possible. It was hot and muggy and difficult to breathe. 
hoping to get this over with as fast as possible. I swung the flashlight around the chamber, hoping to reveal the hidden treasure that lurked within, but... What is all what I fucking saw there, I can never describe. Though I have tried many times, the room was entirely empty save two things. One was a desk in a corner. Much like the pastor's office, the desk... Then there was a second statue. This one was roughly 12 feet tall and remains to this day the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. To put it mildly, it was some sort of demon that towered over us. Such as I could only see the bottom of his jaw where... Where I was. It was looking directly ahead at the staircase, where we had just descended. Its tail was long and swept around the entire room. There, there wasn't a lot of room to move. It, it had claws like any modern depiction of a demon. As I moved around the chamber to view its profile, I noticed horns as well. Neither I or, nor Jamie spoke as, he sh as we shuffled around the rooms on our backs to the wall. As far away as the demon is physically possible, I stepped carefully over his tail to make my way back and came around to the other side of the statue. I, I couldn't take my eyes off of it. I couldn't trust the goddamn thing. If the statue upstairs seemed to bleed, what the hell could this one do? As I eyed the talons on his gigantic stone feet, Jamie broke the silence. Can you even believe this shit? His voice is coming from the other side of the room. I, I searched the darkness for, well... The weak glow is lighter, and I was relieved to see it moving towards me. I turned my flashlight upwards to shine it on the side of the demon's head. The horns had to be at least a foot fucking tall. As it brought down to where, well, as I brought down to see where Jamie was, I, I hit my arm on something hard. Ow, my fucking head! God damn it, Jamie! I whispered in a panic. I dropped to my knees and felt around under her desk, searching for the flashlight. What? It's not my fault you cracked me on the head. I stood back and flung up this light around to see where Jamie was, trying to relight his lighter, but... It wasn't him that stopped me dead in my tracks. I will forever be frozen in this moment. I don't know why. I, I couldn't speak. I couldn't scream. I couldn't move. All I could do was feel my own descent into madness. As I moved the beam of light up to Jamie's face, I had seen another face right next to his, a twisted, angry, soulless face. The demon statue had bent down and turned to his side. Its head was a mere inches to Jamie's, and it was staring directly at me. I, I, I can't describe its face, and I, I'm not sure my mind will ever be able to allow me to remember it in full detail. It's... Shock shook me to my core and my literal senses. My body was having a dark, violent, visceral reaction to this impossibility. Jamie finally noticed the flashlight shaking in my hand and turned to see what he was looking at. It wasn't until he started screaming that he'd been shaken from my paralysis. I dropped the flashlight. Jamie dropped everything else and ran. We took two to three stairs at a time. Jamie was pushing me up ahead of him. The hallway above, we slipped through, both tumbling down halfway the fucking thing. In that horrible moment, we heard the grinding of stone against stone. We knew that statue was fucking moving. Jamie screamed out, but I was mute, too horrified to make it even little squeak. We got up and kept climbing and never taking our eyes off the small dying light above us. Our only salvation now. We were almost at the top when we first heard it on the stairs. It was so large and heavy, the entire staircase shook on its impact. Terrified that the stairs would come crashing down, uh, we'd be left alone with it below. Jamie pushed me up above the opening. He climbed out after me and tried to slam the door shut, but somehow it was stuck. We, we could hear a deafening thunder of the staircase as the statue slowly climbed the steps. I helped Jamie try to push the trap door closed, but for the first time I noticed the symbols on the bottom of the wood were the same on those in the front door. Before I could even comprehend this, I noticed a demon starting to penetrate the shaft of light in the staircase below. It was coming! Jamie saw it too and pulled me to a standing position while pointing at the front door. We both knew and we ran as hard as we <laughs> as fast as on as hard as we could. But before we hit it, it didn't budge. We try again, but it's unsympathetic. Katie! The windows! We ran to the closet, one and tried to climb up the wall and try to get out, but the windows were too high. The thunder below us is getting louder, getting closer. It, it was more than halfway up the stairs. 
We tried to cry, climb the rotting pews to reach the windows, but it crumbled under our weight. I'll push you out. Give me your foot. Jamie yelled over the bellowing sound from below. I shook my head. I, I wanted to. God, I wanted to, but I, I couldn't leave him. I couldn't leave Jamie to face that thing alone. We both looked over at the door again. It was our only chance. We had to keep on trying to break it down. We stumbled back into the aisle and ran to the front door for everything we had. I thought I felt the thing move. We backed up even further and ran at it again. This time, the impact knocked me backwards into the side aisle. Jamie could even stay on his feet. He looked over at me in horror. As I turned around to see, there's stone horns rising up from the darkness of the trap door. Three feet from where I sat. We are going to die here. <laughs> we were going to die here. I stood up, refusing to turn around again. I knew that this next step would bring me ahead into the new room. And I thought that seeing his face again had me running at the door. Every last bit of strength I had, Jamie and I reached at it for the same time and felt a give away as we crashed through the threshold and landed outside of the church. Jamie had picked me up off the ground before I could think or even think about moving. We were running towards the train tracks like an Olympic sprint. We, we could still hear the thundering of the stairs. No matter how far we got from the church, every step echoed through the woods like a gunshot until they stopped. It was here. I had no idea if we had run in the right direction or if we'd be lost forever in those woods. It was now dark outside and the temperature was dropping fast. I was beginning to panic and I felt that we'd never find those train tracks again. Then, to my horror, I realized I was alone. I was all alone. Jamie wasn't next to me anymore. I, I turned around in panic to try to find him. Sprawled across the ground a few yards behind me. He had tripped over one of the rails. He, he was up and running before the track, and before I could even ask, he was okay until he couldn't run. <laughs> God, Jamie. Our running eventually slowed to a jog and a walk. We had it spoken. None, none of us had any ideas what to say, and... It wasn't until we had both gotten our breath back that one of us finally broke the silence. How long have we been on these tracks? It didn't take us long to, to get to, to find this place. Or did it? Do you think maybe when we went the wrong way? I couldn't afford to think like that if we had somehow gotten turned around and ran in the wrong way into train tracks, then we were deeper in the woods than ever. No, no, no. We went the right way. I said, trying to convince myself. That thing. I thought it was a statue, but... But maybe it was some crazy, undiscovered giant reptile that was, like, hibernating and we woke it up. So we're just gonna delude ourselves into thinking that there's a scientific explanation for this? I understood why, but I just can accept it. Yeah. I said slowly. Did... You, um, see that weird writings on the door that was on the trapdoor, too? Do you think that it was keeping it down there? Because, Jamie, all those doors are open now! Well, if it's an animal, words mean nothing to it anyway. Yeah, if it was. I trailed off hoping it would challenge my implication. He did not. I, I could tell that... This was something wrong in Jamie's mind, and he wouldn't accept it, but he hadn't seen his face, not like I had. It was an animal. It was it was made of stone. It wasn't an animal. It was made of stone. Something sinister. Something agently evil had seen me, and seen right down into the depths of my soul. It was aware of me. And... I was aware of it. And now it was free... Uh, whatever had been keeping it beneath the church has been awkwardly destroyed by me and Jamie. That thing was free to walk the woods and God knows where. We walked in silence for about another half an hour until Jamie suddenly stopped a short while and started yelling. Here! We're here! <laughs> He booked it down the tracks towards a swarm of flashlights. I followed closely behind him as soon as Jamie reached his parents, he collapsed. Well, I ran into my mother's arm and cried like a child. I couldn't hold it together anymore. The police report says that we were found at 4 a.m. by our sensed 
in time. That was about three hours after the sun had sent. Set. And we had actually spent less than an hour in a chapel, and yet, it seems we lost ten hours there. We never told anyone what we actually seen, or where we actually had been, or that we actually found the lost city of Deepwood. We simply said we went for a walk to the lake and got lost in the woods. My family left Middlesburg the following Monday, two days ahead of schedule. My father had another store to open, and there's, there, there's really no reason to wait, right? <laughs> ja ja Jamie didn't come to say goodbye to me, and after I left Middleburg, I never saw him again. I kept a copy of the police reports to remember him. Over the following year, Middlesburg slowly disappeared. At first, I could feel my memory fading unnaturally from my mind. My parents couldn't remember that we had ever been there, which scared me even more than losing my mind. I, 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 I taped the police report on my ceiling over my bed so that Jamie would be the first and last thing I thought about every day. Then, the Middlesburg City website disappeared, as did a local paper around the towns and public schools. The store my dad helped open in 2002 disappeared from the company's website. After that, I couldn't even find any mention of Middlesburg anywhere online. Over the years, I searched for public rep records for Jamie's full name, and I found absolutely no nothing. I hired, so I hired someone to legally search the private records, and he come it came up empty too. In the end, the only proof that Jamie ever existed at all was that police report with his name on it. And then there's nothing left. One day, the paper I had taped to the ceiling for so many years was blank. I remember that what it was and what it looked like before, and now it was an old withered piece of blank paper. All that remained of Middlesburg and its people is what lived in my memories, and as I'm writing the story down and uploading it on the internet, once it's on the internet, it can never die, right? Or, or perhaps one day it will just disappear and no one will remember seeing it, or I wouldn't remember writing it. Dear God, it just dawned on me. My memories are so whittled away that I, I, I am at risk of losing them. And the only hope that this can end with Middlesburg is if that has moved on to another town. Or who knows? Who, who would even remember? I'm sorry, I wish I had all the answers, but all I have are questions.